In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And welcome. We can be seated a moment. Welcome, everybody. Wonderful to see you here. Praise God. There are more here today than I thought I would be here when I heard the forecast. So praise God. Praise God for everybody who is here. And you are most, most welcome. I'll have to be putting a few extra altar breads into the Saboria. And praise God for that. That's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And today, <coughs> today in preparation, I had asked you to do a sort of an audit of your own life, your family's life, your home, and the area in which you lived. Was there any sign of any force of evil having come down through the generations? Any sign in your own life? Something that you inherited? Uh, something not good that you were sort of inherited from your parents, mother, father, great grandparents, whoever? Or something, some misfortune that seemed to come upon your family on a regular basis that uh, seemed to have come down through the generations? Or something bad happening either uh, in your home, in your a yard and, and the roads around. Now I had suggested beforehand and those of you who haven't done it beforehand you can st still do it and watch the video perhaps later that if you are aware of something having come down through the generations in any of the areas I mentioned and I would suggest to probably pick just one area at a time don't try to cover a dozen areas pick one area that you focus on and then, in your own leisure, if you haven't done it already, write out exactly how you feel it has affected you, or your family, or your home, or your neighbourhood. And um, there won't be the opportunity now, obviously, to take the next step, but you can do it at home as well. Just do a little summary, a couple of words to sum it up. And um, I had suggested uh, it would be placed on the altar, and some I'm sure have placed them on the altar, the little summaries. Uh, but uh, for at home, you can have a little summary in your daily prayer book and hold it then before the Lord. And now we just offering our Mass today, praying for the breaking of every force of evil that has come down to us through the generations. The breaking of every force of evil that has come down upon our families. The breaking of every force of evil that has come down upon our homes, our land, upon the roads of our area. Through our Mass today, uh, as you will hear in the talk afterwards, uh, St. Paul tells us that Jesus won the victory over all these forces of evil. The victory has already been won. So what we are doing today, we're, and remember the Mass itself, in every Mass, the death and resurrection of Jesus is made present. And it was by his death on the cross that Jesus has won for us the right to have every force of evil broken. Jesus has won that for us by his death on the cross. And his death on the cross will be made present here on this altar. His, the Last Supper, his death, his resurrection will be made present here this day. And Jesus is giving us a personal invitation to be united with him in his death and resurrection made present in the Mass. We call to mind how truly unworthy we are. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, we ask you to bless every person into whose life we have ever brought hurt or disappointment. Christ have, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, we call before you every force of evil that has come down to us through the generations. Every force of evil that has come upon ourselves, that has come upon our families, that has come upon our homes, that has come upon our neighbourhoods, that has come upon our roads. Praying, Lord, through this Mass for the breaking of all such Forces of evil, Lord have mercy. Lord, May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to life everlasting. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace the people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Most High Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commandments of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbour, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in, who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, it is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the Lord is close to all who call him. The Lord is close to all who call him. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. The Lord is great, highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. Response, the, the Lord, Lord is close who call him. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. Response. The Lord, is the Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. Response. The, Lord is the, Lord is close. the second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philippians. Christ will be glorified in my body, whether by my life or by my death. Life to me, of course, is Christ. But then death would bring me something more. But then again, if living in this body means doing work, which is having a good result, I do not know what I should choose. I am caught in this dilemma. I want to be gone and be with Christ, which will be very much the better. But for me to stay alive in this body is a more urgent need for your sake. Avoid anything in your everyday lives that would be unworthy of the gospel of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Be the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessing, uh, blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the heaven in the highest heavens. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idly in the marketplace and said to them, You go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour and again at about the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. <coughs> Then at about the eleventh hour he went out and uh, found more men standing round, and he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You go into my vineyard too. And in the evening the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, Call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired at about the eleventh hour came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner. The men who came last, they said, have done only one hour, and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. 
He answered one of them and said, My friend, I'm not being unjust to you. Did you not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I cho chose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why be, be envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. The main talk will be the ceremony for healing after the Mass. So just a brief word. Jesus, um, the Pharisees were a sort of denied with Jesus that there he was welcoming sinners and uh, giving sinners almost the, the pride of place. And he explained the parable to them that that's how it would be. That if a person truly repents, truly, truly repents and open their hearts to God, that what went before in God's great mercy, it will be blotted out. Though I do believe that if, if they have been a cause of great hurt to others, they will have to deal with that in the other side and make reparation on the other side. But apart from that, apart from where people have brought hurt into the lives of others, if they repent at 99 years of age and truly repent and open their hearts to God, then his mercy is there for them. And part of my the healing ceremony today is praying for those who are not walking in God's ways. Praying for those who appear to have serious sin in their lives, family members, relatives, friends, whoever, who appear to have serious sin in their lives, but coming with confidence in God's great mercy, that he loves them and that he desires their conversion and that he desires their salvation. And if they open their hearts to him, his blessing will go out to them. But there'll be more about that in the talk after Mass. Let us stand to express our faith. And once again, I'll compose a little uh, version of the faith, which I'll invite you to respond to. Do you believe that despite all the terrible things happening in the world and all the apparent crisis within our church and within society, that God is still God and that he has a plan for bringing all things together and for working all things out in the end? Do you believe that Jesus Christ came on earth out of love for us, that he comes to live within us and that right now he is standing right beside the person we consider the worst sinner in all the world. That Jesus is standing right beside that person and interceding to God the Father for that person and desiring that person's conversion and salvation. <coughs> Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? That the Holy Spirit desires to come right into each of our lives that the Holy Spirit desires to prompt us and guide us and to lead us into the fullness of God's plan for our lives. Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. This is the faith of our church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And we'll just... Very briefly, we won't. We had the individual intercessions before Mass, and we'll bring the individual intercessions that were offered before Mass. We'll, we'll bring those with us into the Mass, but just very briefly again, inviting you to think if, the, if any source of evil, anything that has the appearance of evil that has come upon your life, upon the life of your family, upon your home, upon your neighborhood, upon the roads of your area, just select one. I'm praying, Lord, that by the power of your precious blood through this Mass and through the ceremony today, that there will be deliverance from evil. Deliverance from evil. Lord, hear us. Amen. We think of the great evil that's represented by the horrible wars, the deaths, the killings, the maimings, uh, come ahead, come ahead. We think of all the deaths, all the tragedies, 
And again, praying. Yeah, come ahead. Praying, Lord, that by the power of your precious blood, that such changes will take place as will make peace possible. Praying in particular for conversion within Russia, that such changes will take place in the leadership of Russia by the power of your precious blood, that peace may become possible between Russia and Ukraine and in neighboring countries. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for the synodal process. Again, praying that the synodal process may be delivered from the forces of the evil one. And Lord, that you will raise up prophetic voices to speak your word at the synodal process. But also praying, Lord, that people all over the world, Catholics all over the world, will have a spirit of openness, a spirit of desire to be open to the guidance of you, O Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Amen. I'm praying that special things may happen here this day. And the special things may happen as a result of the videos that have been made this day. And we bring these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'll add in one, one or two final ones. We ask your blessing, Lord, for all the donors who made God's cottage possible and the Bible chapel and the grounds possible. And we ask your blessing upon all who are working uh, for to promote God's cottage. Lord, hear us. Amen. We bring these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of him who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For true goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Yes. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away our iniquity. Cleanse us of our sin. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, to the Almighty Father. And again we recall that we're offering this Mass, that by the power of the precious blood of Jesus, that anything of the evil one that has come down to us through the generations may be broken. Receive with favour, O Lord God, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord God, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and 
Kevin Kranz broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of fate. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, given thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord God, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Dermot, our Bishop, the bishops of each of our dioceses and all the clergy and all God's people, including each of our own extended families and offering our Mass today for the breaking of anything of the evil one that has come down to us or to our families through the generations. And interceding as well for the end of the invasion of Ukraine, the conversion of Russia, and for our own Catholic Church, Lord, to walk in your ways. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, including each of our own deceased family members and our deceased ancestors right back to the generations the very beginning of time. And Lord, if there's anybody amongst our deceased ancestors not at peace, we entrust them into your love. And we also entrust to you all who have died in the floods and the earthquakes and in the war, including those who this very day will be slaughtered and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us seek to glimpse God the Father and to speak directly to him as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord God, we pray, from every evil. Every evil including any evil that has come down to us or to our families through the generations. 
Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we just pause a moment and we ask ourselves, is there anything that I need to let go of? Anybody I need to forgive? Any way that I'm meant to reach out with the love of Jesus to somebody? Give somebody a word of encouragement? Or anything of the evil one that I'm being invited to renounce and its power to break? Lamb of God. Lord Jesus, help us to receive you with great faith and great reverence. And today, as we receive you, praying that by the power of your precious blood that everything of the evil one that has come down to us through the generations may be broken. Anything that has come down to ourselves through the generations, come down to our families through the generations, come down to our home, uh, the area in which we live, or the roads of our area. Praying, Lord, that by the power of your precious blood that they may be broken. And praying for the grace to receive you with great faith and great reverence. Behold of the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you, the Lord God of creation, are living in each of us, in each of us. One of the beautiful things about Mass uh, facing the people is that it celebrates the presence of Jesus in each of us. The Muslims worship a distant God, but we worship Jesus who is in our midst and in each one of us. And we pray, Lord, that you will Give each of us a wonderful realization that you truly are present. Each of us. We are tabernacles. You're a tabernacle. Each one of us is a tabernacle. Unworthy tabernacles. But we are tabernacles. Isn't that wonderful? And we unite ourselves with your death and resurrection made present in the Mass. And we offer up our Mass, our Holy Communion, praying this day. For those who do not know you, those who do not love you, and that by the power of your precious blood, that anything of the evil one that has come down to us through the generations, that by the power of your precious blood, it may be broken. It may be broken. If anything of the evil one has impacted upon us, or whether it come down to the generations, or we picked it up ourselves, praying, Lord, that all the powers of the evil one at work in our lives may be broken. I'm making the same prayer for those who watch this on video. That any power of the evil one that has come down to them, to the generations, or that they have picked up for themselves, any force of evil that they have drawn up into themselves by their own conduct, praying, Lord, by the power of your precious blood, that it may be broken. And the grace of a new openness to the Holy Spirit. O Holy Spirit, 
guide us, prompt us, give us the right words, give us great wisdom, help us to be faithful witnesses. I'm praying as well for the grace to bring your presence and your blessing to everything we do and every person we interact with. Lord, may I bring blessing to every person I meet this day. Lord, may I bring blessing to every person I meet this day. Lord, may I bring blessing to every person I meet this day. And for God's cottage here, it's full development. And the true God's cottage that many people will be touched by the power of your love, the power of your blessing. I'm praying for your protection. Again, by the power of your precious blood, that your protection be there for us. Ourselves, our homes, our families, our loved ones, our helpers and all of our cares to safeguard us from all serious danger, accidents and evil and also Lord protection against uh, cancer and other serious illnesses and alcoholism, suicide, Lazarus, depression and your blessing upon those of our people suffering from that. And as today we come against the forces of evil, I invite you now to hold before Jesus whatever is the number one prayer that you are holding before him today as we join together to pray. May your sacred heart, Lord Jesus, be praised, glorified and honoured throughout the whole world, now and forevermore. May your sacred heart, Lord Jesus, be praised, glorified and honoured throughout the whole world, now and forevermore. May your sacred heart, Lord Jesus, be praised, glorified and honoured throughout the whole world, now and forevermore. Graciously raise up, O Lord, we pray, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just one important announcement, very important announcement. Uh, having consulted on times and having reflected on the reasons people gave for why to prefer uh, this time or that time, I have decided uh, that starting next Sunday, we will have the talk and ceremony after the praying of the Psalms at approximately quarter past two, and then Mass at approximately three o'clock. Now, please spread the word about that, um, especially because yesterday my main computer sat down completely. And um, I may not be able to update the website uh, with, uh, until I get the computer fixed. So do please uh, let, get the word around that from next Sunday, uh, that after the Psalms are quarter to two, uh, quarter past two approximately, uh, there will be the talk and ceremony. And then at three o'clock approximately, uh, there will be uh, the Mass. The Lord be with you. <laughs> may the Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord.